Hello, Hello and welcome to the game. Two. <laughs> Hello, game two of the IG versus IG Vitality series. IG took a pretty convincing game yes. one, and we talked about the draft. Thought it was more of a draft weakness than anything, but IG Vitality actually put up a fight towards the end of that game, mm -hmm. and I look forward. <laughs> I can't take this seriously. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I think I think. The biggest thing, right, if maybe the Juggernaut had one more item, like if each core had one more item, they definitely probably could have just ended that game, right? Like if they were diving that base against those two supports and that the offlane Wind Ranger, one more item each, I think they just, they just end the game that right there. That two-man shackle with the Skyrath yeah. Mage, Ags, Ulti, I mean, they just died. And uh, like player. you said, if the Jug was a little bit tankier, they had just a bit more damage, they had the opportunity, two cores, no buyback on the side of IG. So I think IG kind of... We'll take that to heart this game that they had a, like a 30k lead or something and they almost threw it all away. And that's something that you can't afford to lose games like that in, in competitive. And even though they didn't end up losing, it was way closer than it had to be. What do you want to see here? Do you think it's going to be a less track from IG this time? I just want to see IG Vitality draft catch. I don't want to see them lose the game the same way they just, just lost it. Just having no instant stuns, having yep. any real, like you said, like even if they just have X Torrent, like it's better than having yep. a Witch Doctor stun. Any just reliable, like we saw many times at the Sand King, the four oh, position Sand King. Which could be the first pick here yep, as well. Just got away. Highly prioritized here, I believe, in this series. We, you know, we see it all the time, especially in the Chinese region. Just a powerful hero. You know, I think it's going to be Lesher Sand King here. I actually kind of like the Sand King opening more. And I feel like if you pick Lesh, they can deny pick the Sand King, make it even more valuable. But they do see the Lesh. It's Last be game it was other. opposite, right? IG yeah. Vitality drafted the Sand or the Lesh rack first. Almost certainly going to see the Sand King in response because it's just a solid deny pick. And I want to see the Baboka Lesh. I actually really like, especially after uh, well, RIP Navi. They just got rid of a player, but I really like watching Lil uh, on his position for Lesh rack with the Orb of Venom first. I think it's actually really good, almost better than Coralesh. Any of these like long range heroes with low base damage, I think the Orb of Venom is is incredibly strong. Like you don't even realize how much damage they're gonna do. They might just do the Sand same. Sand King. No. Oh, they go the Beastmaster. So I expect the Sand King from IG. It is probably the ideal hero with the Leshrac. They could do something like Axe as well. Um, but we also look if if they do pick Sand King, the one problem I have is that a lot of teams have been prioritizing. Stuff like a bad or tide against this kind of opening, just because those are heroes you cannot go on with this combination. And if you have this strong pickoff combination, and suddenly you have these heroes that are not afraid of it, uh, the viability of those heroes really goes up. So that's something we see a lot in the bands from the team that picks this Skyrath Beastmaster. And I personally would really like to see them just pick that hero right now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But if they feel like they have enough options, you know, you, the Legion Commander doesn't. Um, protect herself, but we saw it in a series earlier. Um, the Legion Commander pretty much took over the game because they just removed all the stunts. And so there are options for that, uh, but they might just still go with the Sand King. Yeah, I'm watching the coach on the screen right now. He's just pointing at heroes. He's you really lips? That, you read the lips there? No. <laughs> but he was pointing at the top right, so if we look at the, the hero tab, that would be a strength hero, which Clockwork it is. Yeah, there it is. Exactly like I said. The yep. option. <laughs> nah, Do they want, Clockwork. So obviously we saw it, man. I don't, I, I don't know if you saw, it, but Ice Ice Ice, he played an insanely good Clockwork. I think they ended up losing that game, but he solo killed a Luna. He was like level 18 at eight, 20 minutes in. He he just owned. So I mean, I, I like a position four, but it can be off lane as well. It does pick both of these heroes off, but I I don't know. I, I don't feel like Clockwork is what I would be looking for in this pick. So I'm looking to I, – I, I'm excited to see what they choose to do with it. Um, anytime that I'm not on the same page as all as the drafter, I like to see uh, – at least try to rationalize their train of thought, especially as the draft pans out. But I will say, at least with IG Vitality, they have more catch potential in the first two heroes than they had in the entire lineup yeah. last game. So that's a big deal. They banned the PL, probably the most noteworthy – um, hero against this Beastmaster Skyrath, you can purge off the Beastmaster Amp stacks from the from the axes, which is really nice, and then it scales well against the Skyrath, which we saw in the previous series. Uh, you just don't want a hero that can sustain through the the, the crap. You're yeah. just gonna be they're throwing it all at you. They're pushing yeah. Q or whatever hockey they may have. And what about this Visage ban? You. Uh, 
Is with that an IG Master? Vitality special? I'm not sure. I think it's just, right, you have Beastmaster, you get a, a Visage, you get all the ores and all that, maybe you get a Venge Visage, I guess. You the can one just thing about like Visage that. is he struggles with split push, like the enemy team yeah, splitting does. him up, and they already have that really covered on the IG Vitality front, so maybe they've, like we said, we, we know these teams scrim each other a lot, the sister yeah. teams or brother teams, you know, to each their own, but they, they clearly, like, that seems out of left field. I don't yeah. think that, maybe, maybe the, the Clockwork single target damage and the less rack over time damage, it just isn't that good against the Gravekeeper, Gravekeeper's yeah. Cloak. Uh, I feel like Visage is a hero that was like super popular towards the end of the last patch, and then... It got played a little at, by, like, Weeha. Like, yeah. Weeha's the only person really, like, played it at Epicenter. It's a really like, vulnerable you know. laning stage, Yeah, is what I've seen, is, like, some of these Visages, once they hit level 6, the game's yeah, you, free. Yeah, exactly. You, you lose your laning phase, it feels like. Visage doesn't win a lane, yeah. but then he can catch back. He's one of the few heroes, right? He can gank around the map without even having to be there. He yep. can farm around the map without even to be there, which is really nice to have, obviously. And yes, He has an EXP talent, too, right? Uh, 40%. I think it's level 15. Yeah, it's and 40%. It, yeah most people take yeah. it. His talents are pretty good, but he's a hero that just suddenly kind of fell off the face of the map in terms of, like, I've only seen him once or twice in the last, like, two tournaments. It's funny. And it's not like he really got nerfed, but just sometimes you just fall out of favor. Yeah, yep. A lot of items he buys got nerfed. Another Witch Doctor pick... Uh, when I look at Witch Doctor picks, I always think of like there's a better hero. There's to do something their job. like a like a, a summons hero or something where the cast just stands out to me. And last last game, it didn't really seem to make sense to me other than the sustain in the lane. And I don't think that's enough to pick Witch Doctor. I would honestly rather have a Warlock if that's why you're picking it. Uh, but maybe it's just a comfort zone pick for IG Vitality. Oracle, so it is. Well, they have a lot of physical know. damage on the side of IG Vitality, so they have the purge, obviously, or the the, the cleanse that Kyle yeah. calls it for the Beastmaster ult. But heroes like Leshrac really like Oracle, just because they do enough damage by themselves. All they need to do is live. But not the most amazing Oracle pick in regards to usually you like it not only against the stuns but also against immense magic burst, which is only coming from one hero so far on IG Vitality, which is a support. But it is a pretty big amount of damage. Obviously, yeah, yeah, for sure. I just, I don't know. That. Oracle is a weak laner. That's one thing about him. Low base damage, uh, vulnerable, I guess you could say, to just getting gone on and ran at. Um, we'll just have to see. I, I think it's a good hero. I think it's underrated. Yeah. No, one of my favorite thing uh, is still that Stan King clip on Reddit like three years ago. When he, he queued the courier? He queued the courier and ran it over an enemy. I just, it was, it's like one of those clever things you're like, only Dota, man. Like, yep. can someone like think of this and then do it? It's just amazing to me. But these are definitely three different heroes from, I mean, Skyrath, Witch Doctor, but like, whoa. What? That's a fourth? This isn't even a fifth pick invoker. This is a fourth pick Invoker. That's a very, I mean, it's kind of a traditional combo between the Beastmaster yeah. Invoker, the Sunstrike, but gives just that solo kill potential Dude, immensely. His but starting mana is like 250 now because of all the intellect nerfs. Like, really? I mean, it's not that bad. It's uh, bad, but it's though. Bad, it is yeah. really bad. Because like, he actually cool starts, I think, with pretty low int, but then yeah. just has like massive int growth. Yeah, but now he starts with two less. Like, it's yeah. Just, I'm, I'm interested. I can't believe they just they straight up picked it. Dude, do. Chinese teams run draft the strats. P there's a lot of Invoker counters that are actually already banned out. Heroes like the Night Stalker, PL is very good against Invoker, Nyx Assassin. These heroes are banned out, so maybe they just didn't think there was a pick for IG in yeah, this mid lane. I would love to see a Drow lineup right now from a, a Chinese team. I have not seen a Drow lineup in so long. The thing about Drow is, like, how do you deal with Beastmaster plus one in the laning stage? No, no, I mean like Beastmaster plus Drow. Oh, you're On saying Drow Invoker. Because you have okay. Skyrath, Witch Doctor, Invoker, okay. and a Drow with Aura from Beastmaster. Okay, okay. I don't think they will, because I have never seen him do it. The only it, problem I have with that is that all their cores would die to clock. So that's like the one problem I have. They go for the Kunkka. I mean, shocker there, I guess. Uh, I'm sure he'll have no problem catch. in the mid lane. And there's nothing to like stop this catch except Skyrath Silence now. Yeah, Invoke. I, I have a bad feeling this Invoker might just get <laughs> dumpstered on. I, I really do. I, I'm curious to see how he plays it. Like, oh. if you go, I'm assuming he'll go X Exhort just because of the Sunstrike with the yeah. Beastmaster I pairing. I have to. But. <sighs> Like, I look at this game again, and last game we saw a ton of stuns, a ton of damage on IG, and no saves. Yeah. And the only save was Omni Knight ulti. And I feel like the same thing this game. They just have so many reliable stuns, and every hero on IG Vitality is vulnerable to yeah. these stuns. So I feel like I want to emphasize that this last hero for IG Vitality has to not care. I wouldn't mind the Jug pick again. Because that's a hero that just doesn't die to the crap that IG Vita that I IG gaming has. Let's check Oracle Clock, yeah. Yeah, and 
I think is Life Stealer banned? No, I think either Life Stealer or Jug really stands out to me. Jug better, but I'm assuming they'll ban it on the side of Invictus. Why do you think Gaming. Jug's better than Life Stealer? Um, just the physical damage on towers. Like I don't okay. think you really need the pick off from like Life Stealer offers more pick off while Jug's kind of like a more active like farming carry ish. Yeah. And so if you if you lack pick off, then Life Stealer can be good. But I don't think they need that for their lineup. And so I feel like. I feel like they'll just pick this a magic immune hero because all that like, what does Invictus Gaming do to a BKB other than Clockwork hook you? Invictus and Gaming they actually banned the Monkey King. Oddly Invictus. enough, the I think the X marks the spots pretty good against Monkey King, but I def I'm, I mean I'm calling the jug for them on the side of Vitality, and Invictus Gaming I I would like to see a BKB piercing damage, whatever it may be, something like Troll, Ty. Oh, who are they laning against? Corlesh against the Beastmaster, I guess. I'm assuming. Yeah. So they do end up going the tide that I thought so they might go like the, second pick. Yeah, but. so it is going to be the carry lash. Yeah, off lane tide and middle. If concept. they don't pick okay. Jug, I don't understand Dota. What about Lifestealer? You'll give them that, right? Or no? Okay, Lifestealer is acceptable. <laughs> but not. But they took Jug last game. Yeah. And I didn't and think that was a, a particularly game. amazing Jug game. And I feel like this is. They just picked Tide. It's even a good hero against Tide in the laning stage. And BKB is. A free game against this Invictus gaming lineup. Mm -hmm. Last game, he still died if he got spin off to the Wind Ranger yeah. Focus Fire as Plenty well. Plenty of damage, but this yeah. game, you have a less track and a tight hunter yeah. core. What? Uh, this please. is way different. I, I like this, right? Even the winning team, they're, they're just switching it up. Don't right? doubt yourself. You yeah. just picked Jug in a not ideal Jug game, and this is, in not my opinion, jug. perfect. So, I. Please. What? Okay. Razor versus Tide. You're not a fan? Or you just I like the fact that like he has good matchups this game, but what? it was the same thing last game where they were just like spread too thin on their heroes. They like couldn't farm on their heroes, and I don't think they're gonna have the same issue with pick off like they did last game. But I just I I, uh, I look at games and I just think if you can pick a hero, doesn't give a shit about anything the enemy team does to kill you, you pick it. Like especially if all your you don't like ruin your draft. Meaning if you don't have any push, you pick some push or something like that. But I, I just feel like Jug or Lifestealer would have just been so easy to play this game. And I just, when you have these weaker teams, I think IG Vitality is considered weaker than IG. Yeah. I feel like the more straightforward drafts are, are more reliable. Better. So I don't think, I definitely think they have a better draft than last game. That's that's for sure. This game seems like it's going to be a real skirmish. Like 20 to 30 minutes in, there's going to be a lot of just straight up team fights. Yeah, but I feel like the way that team fights are conducted is that Tide the, I like the Razor because in team fights the Tide can't just walk in and be invulnerable because even if he can't get roared he can't just give 200 damage to this yeah. Razor but at the same time I, I mean I just I have to favor IG's lineup I think they're more I think it's more straightforward I don't think Vitality can pull this off is basically what I'm saying I feel like their draft has merit and I think I see what their game plan is but it's good. They, they have to try a little. They have to execute better. That, yeah, the, the threshold, the execution threshold. Like you is just, just walk in, you get a, a four or five man ravage. It's a lot easier than, you know, getting this perfect invoker combo off. Exactly. Sunstrike will scout out. No. Nope. I shall not report you. <laughs> Some of these voice lines are pretty good, and the rest are. You have a pretty high battle pass, right? Yeah. What do you add, a 1,000? Yeah, 1,200 or something like that. I had to get the Echo Slam Ajama of course. emote. I Did, felt when do you, you have the question mark deny, right? That exists yes, again? Okay. Yeah. What level do you remember? I think it's like 300 or something. Okay, I got it. That's, That's pretty good early one. on. Yeah, it's, it sends a message for sure. It's like, pretty early on, 300? Jesus. Well, okay, Scrooge McDuck. Okay, Jesus, <laughs> money bags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, compared to some of the other stuff, for some reason the Not voice true. lines go from, like, rank 2 or level 250 and suddenly the next one's at 1,200. Yeah. Which, you know, it's just in beta, so free game. No no, no complaining. None here. Only BSJ. Yep. I just uh, – that's I'm, that's one of my specialties. <laughs> but uh, it is going to be – Feeding and yeah. complaining. Feeding and complaining. Your two favorites. Yep. Tide Hunter boots first. Haven't seen many boots first, but on tight under no. No other items too. really do anything against the razor. They both have. He boots. just has to break the link. Yep. That's why they both have boots. Middle Kunkka again. So it will be an Oracle Leshrac, not a, a lane you see all that often. And they're going to be going up against what looks like 
probably Beastmaster Skyrath, you think? Or is it going to be Looks a like they're straight up or? aggroing this. And I'm, maybe the reason they picked the Razor is because they want to be able to do this. That would be a difference between, like, the Jug lane. Jug would rely on the Witch Doctor support as opposed to Razor, who I don't see how IG shuts this down. But they are rotating the Witch Doctor nonetheless. And he might, like, this is more of a Maledict lane, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think that if he just Maledicts the Tide, even with the long cooldown, I just don't, like, now that you can't drag creeps, this type of lane is even worse for Invictus Gaming. I don't think I've ever seen a Beastmaster plus one lose an off lane yet. Beastmaster just doesn't lose a lane if he has a partner, especially so someone annoying. like with Arcane Bolt. That is just insane. Look, it's going to be a tri lane actually from IG. Top lane, that's that's one way to shut down a Beastmaster. So bottom lane, it's going to be tied with boots, and he's going to be fine just trying to get experience. And then middle, that's the big one, right? Invoker, you just don't see it that often. And it's going to be an Invoker versus Tidebringer Kunkka. That is, yeah, you just see the nice already four and three. Maybe the Quas region will be enough, but uh, I, so far I have not seen a hero fare all that well against Jesus. the Kunga. The denies are just too easy. Already has four denies on the Kunga. Make it five. Yep. Now top. They're going to lock down at dogfights. Get the stun off right now. Now just get a right click. This is looking like a first blood on dogfights here. But aggressive in a lot of trouble. The axes fly back. Two more hits it looks like, but... He's just going to get away. He does have another axe. Nice dodge of the stun by in July. He has axes again. Yeah. And he throws them, but aggressive new woes up. And now, if he gets one more bolt, that's going to be a kill. He has no salve, though, so he's out of this lane. Even if he doesn't yeah. die, this he is going to close either yeah. way. But Do you run back or TP? I, I feel like you disco your way back. Disco your way back and then TP. Because yeah. then you don't know if they're, if he's going top or bottom again. I'm Could surprised he can go for the salve against the... Against the Beastmaster Sky Lane, I feel like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna take a lot of damage, and it's not a feel good to have to go back to base as a carry player at a minute 50 into the game. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, right? Like, you got first blood, but is it worth missing like two full creep waves? Because that's what it feels what it's like. Absolutely you know? not in this patch. Yep. And maybe, now, maybe you know, 7.16. Yeah. Now middle lane, it is 9-7 for the Kunkka beating the three four Invoker, but you see him, he's getting low. He has to use his potion already. And, that's going to be the biggest thing. The Invoker will always win the Harass at the early levels at least. But Surprised he leveled Forge Spirits against the Kunkka. He just kills it in one cleave Look, hit. one shot, yeah. Bottom. Tide pulls the Creep Wave over as a Haste Rune, so he's fine with this. Nice. Yeah, he's actually going to get pretty much level 3 off of this Creep Wave, which is really nice. Let's see. Oh, nice job not getting that Creep denied. So... I'm not sure. Middle lane, probably not going to be any kills unless someone rotates or it's just going to be Kunkka getting the last hits and denies. Top lane, they're going in again. Looks like they want to bring down in July, but instead, Bobica goes down, and there we go. They tie up the top lane here and scare Aggressive Egg. And Aggressive is only level 2 and a 4th, while the Beastmaster is about to hit level 3. So this is exactly what I think IG Vitality needs to have happen for them to win this game. The Razor definitely enables this aggression top because he'll just win the lane bottom, but the mid lane does not look good for this Invoker um, in terms of the CS. Is running out of regen here, though. On Obviously, the Kunkka can fly something out if he wants. He probably doesn't want to, but might be forced to. Once uh, He always can X himself back to base is True. the one thing, which is well. pretty strong. I wonder if they'll ever take care of that if Kunkka core becomes too prevalent, which we've seen a lot of it so far. Kind of the, in my opinion, the surprise hero so far of this group yeah. stage, first day. That's, true. That's been in the game for so long, right? And like, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of same with Puck, right? Puck can just throw an orb, TP back, fill a bottle, and go. Yeah, you definitely have a little bit more time. With True. <laughs> Eight second X mark. Oh, top lane, they're going in. Stun's gonna fly in July, looking in a lot more in trouble this time. We'll go down, Boba Cut. Should die to this Maledict. One more right click comes out. Should be the kill. Does. Dogfights will get right clicked. And All right. I think this always favors the offlane team rather than the safe laner. Because if you look at the carry comparison between the Leshrac level, barely level 3, and the Razor, who's about level 5 at this point, yeah. and farming up a big camp as well as the lane Tidehunter doing the classic drag creeps because there's no way in, in heck that he is contesting this Razor first CS. He just has two waves. All right. Sure. There's a Sunstrike going off somewhere. Trying to hit XXS, which he does. Now he's just going to run back middle. So what is it? 25-9 versus 17-6. He's nice. about evening out. It's been a constant like above by 8 CS or so on the Kunkka. So apparently it's not all that bad for Invoker at this stage. But Kunkka is a whole half a level ahead. Yeah, that's going to be rough. So bottom, when do you, do you just want to see the Razor continue to push bottom? Or when do you want to see him rotate? I feel like Razor is a hero that, especially in a game like this where Beastmaster 
doesn't really match up well against the tide, and Voker's not going to rotate. That's it's an Invoker. It's I feel like he's just going to stay bottom unless he maybe gets some small skirmishes, and I think the Treads say that. Usually phase on these type of heroes mean I'm going to run around, be active, while Treads are more of like a farming with Tread switching as well as uh, trading in lane. Super. And it's not going to be in trouble. It's going to be Bobaku who's actually in trouble. But in comes the last drag as well as Q on that Oracle. They blow up Super and now Dogfight's in a lot of trouble. Oh, he gets healed up and now he's going to die finally. But in comes in July. He can't do much except throw axes. And I'm not a big fan of this Tri-Lane Beastmaster just because he's not getting levels. Yeah, I'm personally surprised that there are two bounty runes that are not picked up in the bottom lane. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. There's he's five like, oh. minutes. These things are like 250 gold each. For the team, and Boba is just gonna walk in and pick it up. Sure, that's a five. That's a thousand gold swing. Yeah, they got they got one of the other ones. Wow. Clockwork got three of the bounty runes. I mean, each rune's technically a five hundred gold swing because one team gets two fifty compared to the other ones. So, yeah. I, I I am very surprised Miracle did not take the time to go pick those up. It's big, and that's that's one of the things, right? You used to as like a a one position. You you kind of went out of your way to get bounty runes because it benefited you. Now it's yeah. like, oh well, it's it's not the biggest thing, but it still means a lot. Middle lane. This clockwork just running in. Sunstrike will miss. He's looking to be in a little bit of trouble. There's a lot of people. Boat's going to come in as well as Torrent. Q's there. And it's a one for one trade, and there's just six heroes middle now. <laughs> All right. It's yeah, a crazy game. bottom lane's kind of a dead lane for, for Invictus Gaming right. at this point. You can't really do anything to this Razor, and Tide That's is just going to. On, on Tide? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like. Both heroes in the bottom lane. Razor controls the lane. They're both just going to try to get their farm up. Tide has no aggression potential. Razor's completely content to control the lane. And we're kind of just seeing that in his itemization with the treads as well as the Aquila. And they have to get this Beastmaster levels up. I don't like. He's actually almost level 6, so if he does rotate on Razor, it would be at that point. But I don't think he's really rushed to rotate because they have the Sunstrike to pair with the Beastmaster 6, so... Yeah. It should be enough to threaten this Lush Rack, which is going to be quite scary for Aggressive, who's only level 4 at 7 minutes into the game. Yeah, no, I and mean, he will finally get level 5. Share, yeah, maybe not. He's just he's sharing sharing small camps with your, your support. That's why I was kind of surprised they ran the Lush in this lane uh, against the Beastmaster. I am still struggling to figure out how to deal with this dual lane Beastmaster shenanigans. Yeah, he just... Keeps throwing axes at you, right? You can't really do much. Yeah, I mean, and, and they, amp, they amp his right clicks, and he right clicks for 65 at level 1. So not pretty much every hero in the game cannot Radiant's trade with that. But the Razor having a fantastic start on the side of IG Vitality. So this will I, – I'm interested to see where he looks like he's going Yules, which is odd to me. I feel like if he goes – it does it does cancel out the X mark, which is nice. But – Move speed as well is always nice on Razor. But you can just get a Yasha. I, yeah, no, it's actually a nice item for Razor. It, it does like it does speed up your farm because move speed and mana regen. He does farm with abilities, but uh, and he doesn't have to be the one position for this team. They have the Invoker. It's just funny to it's funny to see a hero that's absolute free farm and he turns it into uh, a Yule. So a more defensive than aggressive item. Yeah, but I don't necessarily mind that if he just plays the farm game. This game, I, honestly, IG doesn't really have a carry. Yeah, just have a core lash. Once they get BKBs, it's very hard for IG to actually take fights. So this game's looking a lot better, in my opinion, for IG Vitality than last yeah, game. Yeah. Way better. And already, I mean, it is five to 5-4. A little gold lead for Invictus Gaming, but... Top lane, they have the Roar into the Sunstrike. Yep, there it is. Doink. And casual advancement on half's timings. Will, is he going for the minus? Oh, or? No, he actually has treads. Pardon me, they just... Stun Maledict, I assume. Yep, level 2 Maledict, and they get another kill, so IGV, they will take the lead here. And yeah, it feels like a lot of this game for IG is going to be on the Kunkka. Like, he is their, their quote-unquote carry in this game as well. Yeah, and I mean, this Invoker is going for this Treads build. Treads into Ag Scepter, so he's not going the Midas. Pretty much just an outdated item at this point. Just too slow in the current meta, and we're going to see... I think a lot of ramping up the pace around Beastmaster Ultimate. It's a pretty low cooldown, only 80 seconds at level 1. Yeah. And they're going to be giving their levels to Skyrath, who's a pretty important part of that combo. I'm pretty sure every hero in the game, except for Tide, will die to the combination of the Skyrath Mage ult and the Beastmaster Roar. And that just feels bad on a Leshrac to, to be under that amount of threat. And But they do have the Oracle for the counter initiate. He's almost level 6, actually. You like the... The Aquila on Leshrac? It's meant for the tower pressure, in my opinion, and uh, 
I don't think he's going to be able to make the tower pressure. It's like a weird item that I think he kind of has to build because of the armor against the Beastmaster. Oh, Ravage bottom lane will hit. Boat comes in, Torrent as well. Coconut's going to fly. The Cleave does a ton of damage. They can't bring him down quite yet, though. Strength treads an Aquila, but they do trap him in. In comes the Sun Strike, ton of damage on Boboka, but I think it looks like he's going to be okay. Now they're chasing down dogfights. X comes up. Pulling back. And this is why I honestly wasn't a huge fan of the Razor. It's just like he dies to the stuff that he has IG no. He doesn't has. really have the mobility. Yeah, and it's like once he gets his Yules, he'll be a lot less susceptible to the X Torrent combo um, because you can just Yules yourself before he pulls you back. In mid lane, will he get him with the Cold Snap Roar combination? Yep, there's the kill. And the easy kills. That's the one thing I like about this game is their formula for getting this pickoffs is way simpler than it was in the previous one. Oh. Middle lane, they're just, they're kind of dancing. Looks like this will be a kill on the Invoker. Kind of overstepped his welcome, aggressive, baited him in right there. And it's a pretty big kill, especially with the Leshrac getting it. Yeah, and if if Razor just doesn't die anymore, basically, because he gets these, like, one or two survivability items up, I think that's really the only way back in the game for IG. Like, I think they have to be able to kill in the Invoker and the Razor. I feel like Beastmaster is going to keep putting the pressure on. They kind of just have to avoid him. Yeah. And... As long as they don't have Ravage, I feel like fights will go IG Vitality's way. But at the same time, I don't think they'll ever really try to take fights because the team fight for Invictus Gaming is just so powerful, even without the Ravage. Like, there's no, I don't feel the reason why they'd want to fight this early with the Razor and Invoker. These two heroes, like, despite the fact that they had good starts, like Invoker hasn't online yet until he has the until he has the Ags, but they go on bottom lane again with the X marks, Torrent combo into Boat. Will hit. They need some more follow-up, though. Doesn't look like they have one yet. No Ravage this time. He has X marks. Not quite off cooldown again. But meanwhile, Clockwork is getting his level 6 top, so that's pretty important for Invictus Gaming. They're making space for him while he's doing that. Invoker's probably going to pressure the mid lane. So what if Invoker just gets Ags, and then do, when do they want to fight? Do they? I don't... I, you don't think they? they I just think get they have to fight. If, as master? long as Ravage is up, I don't think they're ever going to fight. And but when the Ravage is off cooldown or on cooldown, like now, they're looking for forcing the issue against this Kunkka. The Sunstrike just makes these kills so easy. And Ravage is going to be off cooldown, but in no way is it going to be used here. Yep, phase boots tied, just runs away. Yeah, I think it's important for them to keep the safe one, safe lane tier one alive on the side of uh, Vitality. I just think that with this Beastmaster split push threat that it makes it that much harder for IG to farm the map if they have no towers. Tower and we're actually going to see a push coming out from Miracle, who doesn't quite have that Yule's complete. Uh oh Well, they're by the Tier 2 right now. They're just going to find the Oracle. Oh, no, and he splits the Wickets on Clockwork. Should still be able to get the Witch Doctor. Looks like SRF will right click him down. In comes the X. Here comes the Boat Torrent as well. I will somehow didn't kill. expect to look at the two, the Witch Doctor Skyrath Mage diving, but... Uh, they end up paying the price, but right. Invoker did do a lot of damage to the mid tier one, and they took the tier one bottom. Yep. So, so not terrible. Good. Still, yep. probably didn't have to commit that many deaths. Yeah, that seemed it. a little deep. Even with the clockwork missing the hook. But bottom lane in July does have book one now on Beastmaster. Miracle does have that. Ewell, so what does he have? 408 movement speed with Treads Ewells. That's only one level one in the passive. I'm kind of surprised that. The Tidehunter went for a hood first. While they have the Skyrath Mage, I feel like he's only going to take damage from that if you stun, which you can just crack and shell it off. Five gold. And I'm I'm under the impression that his problem is Razor. That's my opinion. So like you would have liked like a Force Staff? Yeah, something that deals with Razor. Like even just like a drums to run away, something. I, I think Force Staff is probably the item I would have chose. But it just feel, And it's also nice because if you Force Staff somebody out of the Beastmaster combo, it breaks up the Skyrath as well as uh, the Sunstrike follow-up. So I'm a little I, – I feel like this hood – okay, so he has four staff Ooh, queued up second. They're going to go in. Will he get the roar off? The hook shot comes in, disrupts a little bit, but it looks like Kunkka will still go down. He does. Boka now in a lot of trouble himself. That's a two for zero. If that hook somehow hit that Beastmaster, would have stopped a lot of that. But instead, they might just go for a tier two here. Not going to lie, even more so disliking the hood purchase after that. I know he wasn't even there for that, but you saw Kunkka do, does die full to zero during this Beastmaster yep. roar sunstrike. Skyrath, and a uh, force staff actually breaks that up, and that's very cheap item, utility wise. And I don't feel like the hood actually protects him all that much, and it doesn't save his teammates. Like you're not gonna buy the full pipe in order to save your teammates. Nobody's gonna live through that combination yeah. of damage. 
But this is without the Invoker even being there. Just yep. a Sun Strike. Like, once he gets there with some Meteors, some Tornadoes, you're in a lot of trouble. I love playing Invoker, or I love seeing Invoker be played with heroes like Beastmaster, with heroes like Void, where you don't have to actually be there to contribute the reliable Sun Strike damage. I mean, that Global Pure damage is no joke. That's about how much a normal hero would contribute to the fight in the first place. No. All Very right. close to Ags. Are you, are you an Invoker player? Uh, I, I have 12 games on Invoker. All right, I was going to do some trivia, but I don't want to – I don't know anymore. I was going to be like, what, is, what does Quas Quas Wex make? Is that – I don't know. That – wait. Whatever you say, I'm going to say it's correct. It's not Tornado. Is it Tornado? I think it's Tornado. No, Ghost Walk. I think it's Ghost Walk. Is it? I'm, I'm sticking with that. All right, Ghost you're Walk. correct. Nice. I don't know. I just asked you a question I didn't have an answer to, but top lane <laughs> – they're going to try to push it in. They're doing a lot of damage to this tier two. In comes the tight Hunter, but like you said, he can't even force staff Ravage, right? Like, he has to just Ravage and, and then phase boots in. And oh, I love the alacrity on the Siege Creep. That the is value. so much damage. It is so much. Look, look at that. <laughs> Holy moly, it chunks that tower. Yeah. One more hit here. The value. Oh, he oh, get it, it off. Oh, it's because he didn't. Oh, my God, he could have anchor smashed it, but... <laughs> Q? I mean, we talked about the Oracle. Like, why did they third pick Oracle? I, I still haven't seen it yet. We've, we've seen a little bit of save, but not really. Like, he, he hasn't really been that involved. And I like the way Vitality's actually delegating their resources. They're just putting Invoker in, the like, the passive farm area. The Razor's just playing off map, and then the Beastmaster and the supports are sitting top, waiting for anybody on IG to walk out and die. Yep, that's the best part about Global, right? Invoker is useful anywhere on the map. And they don't have the best way of killing him either. They have the combo from X Torrent, but I feel like if once he gets like a Yules himself or even just like a BKB, his game will be super easy to play. Maybe even a Lincoln's if he wants to go the luxurious route. For the Here sustain. we go. Looks like they're just going to take this tier two top. Generally a pretty free tower when you have a Beastmaster. The lane's just constantly shoved in. Has the Necro book complete? Probably looking to Roche sometime in the near future, but they do have a lot of ways to contest, so they'll probably have to get kills first. They're content to just control this part of the map. I think that, based on what we talked about with the carry situation for IG, Vitality is very content to just chill. Yep. Bloodstone first item after Aquila. No special boots or anything. IG's ready to go with that Bloodstone, though. They are. Do you not? Do you like the No Yules build? Um, I think Lush. it's greedier, but because they have the Oracle, I think they can get away with it. Well, here we go. Hookshot comes in. Boat's going to fly. Torn as well. It's going to hit onto nobody. The sounds on Baboka, and that's going to be an easy kill on him. That was just a complete whiff by XXS. That was a s but he does have the Arcanor, so it's almost off cooldown already. Look at this. They're thinking about going into Roche still. you got to be careful. They have to know he has the Arcane Rune. He might not have used it before the ultimate, but either way, he still does have the lower cooldown on all of his abilities. They are smoked up, given the reach around. Tide X marking the Tide Hunter to go in. That's pretty funny. Is that going to hit him? Wow. The tornado's going to do enough. It's going to bring him down on the backside. Ravage does come out. It slows him down. Will they continue to chase, though? Can they? Instant respawn from the Lesh, though, but he did go down, and the Oracle got roared in the background, yeah. so he could not save his Lesh. And that's not good, right? Lesh already down. In, I mean, you go naked Bloodstone, and you lose most of your charges already. That does not feel good. That is, I mean, especially because it, when it's a core Lesh, like, that Bloodstone is your farming speed. Yeah. And now XXS is going to have a Shadow Blade in about 200 gold. It just feels like they can't team fight as well as last game. Yeah, uh, it just their reach is not nearly as scary this game as it was last game yep. for the side of IG. They have the X, but they don't have like any of the other. And the, the clockwork we've seen, right? He he whiffed one hook, and then he hooked in there, but the the Kunkka just didn't hit his abilities. Yep, There's they the just dispersed on the All side right. of uh, Vitality. But once they have this BKB on Razor, he's absolutely unkillable for the most part. And I don't know. I'm curious to see how this game plays out, but I, I definitely am liking IG Vitality's chances here. He scouts them out from Baboka, but they're just going to back off the hate. They have the ward that will scout them out for Roche. And like I said, they are they want to Roche, but they can't just walk in with the clockwork hook. And they're just going to keep trying to force IG to come back. And if IG doesn't respond, then they're just going to do this. But their goal is to try to force them to come to them, especially with the Ravage on cooldown for the next 60 seconds. And, yep. But they still have the boat plus clockwork, so I think they need to be a little bit scared. They do immediately separate from the pit. 
they're just trying to make IG react to them, and they have to make sure they're very careful with this because they have a lot of punish if they manage to group them up. Um, if Vitality groups up for the abilities. Well, XP gain for the Oracle now. Has the Aether Lens, so that False Promise, he can do it from way downtown now, which is going to be nice, but who do you even False Promise? Like, Pretty it, much it whoever gets roared or, or so, invoker yeah. comboed, I think. It feels like you don't have a true care, right? You have the less track, who does do a ton of damage, but only nine Bloodstone charges at 20 minutes. And I feel like the Oracle is better for heroes that have, like, a clear way to turn the fight. Yeah. And it just doesn't go that well with Lesh. But he does find the pick off bottom, it looks like. Yep, they kill the... Super. Yep. Super on Witch Doctor. He's been having a... Gang tanking for his Razor. That's, that's fine. space. I actually like that because Miracle's farming up his, his BKB. So by standing there, he's basically saying, you're not going to get to my Razor without going through me, which is absolutely fine. No. In July... Is he getting his book? He's going blink before book three. He got book two, but now he's just he's saving for blink. Do you, you like that? Just the initiation, or I think the fact that he has the sunstrike follow up makes this more a potent. Good, yeah, more potent, and it also means that he his best target's the oracle because everyone else can just get saved by oracle. And so if he can manage to scout the oracle with no, if there's no four staff near him from the tide hunter, the oracle will just die full to zero. And Oracle being out of the fight will make these heroes like Leshrac have to play differently. And so these heroes like Oracle, the Dazzles of the world, you know, the sad thing is when you pick them as a support, you're pretty much screaming at the enemy team to go on you come first every me, Yeah, <laughs> come make, come make sure me, I'm your do. first target. Feels, you know, uh, but because if you go on anyone else, you're, they're, they're just going to get saved. And so far, Q, I haven't really seen any impactful false promises coming out from him. And uh, But now, like you said, he has the Aether Lens, so his positioning, he has a lot more room for uh, reach to save his teammates. He has the full Yules on Lush. There's a BKB coming out on Razor, though. Is this the... Does uh, Unstable Current still purges Yules, right? I no. don't think it purges it the Yules itself. Okay. It purges, like, Ghost Scepters and stuff. Okay. But I don't think it hits invulnerable units. Okay. Not like the Nullifier stuff. True, so... Do you just want to see IGV? Do you want to see him just group up his five and maybe take towers? Yeah, it's just a little awkward. I feel like they need tied. to keep doing what they're doing with Invoker, and they're just going to keep basically playing this cat and mouse game with IG around the Roche Pit. They want to make IG. They're going to limit IG's farm by just saying, if you don't come back to the Roche Pit, we're going to take it. And you see that IG keeps being forced to react to this while Invoker's just farming. And Invoker is their one position here on the side of Vitality. And they just know they can't commit. So I really like the approach that Vitality's taking here. And they're just dragging him back and forth. Invoker's just farming. And they're content with that. This is very... I mean, it's 24 kills in 23 minutes, but it's not like it's like everyone's farming. This is a very... It's a very slow-paced game, even with that many kills. It's just Invoker farming. It's interesting like, to see he went yeah. back for the bots. Yeah, he did. I, after having treads. Two boots, one for each foot. One for each. Yeah. Mismatched. Just like when I got beat up in middle school. You want to talk about it? Nah, I'm good. Okay. It was my fault for wearing Payless shoes. <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> but <laughs> Razor, PKB, I want to see him fight. I, I, it's I know so hard for them to force fights. Yeah, they I don't know. exactly, like, the Invoker is their objective tied. forcing, yeah. but Invoker is a hero that's completely vulnerable based on his positioning, and if he throws himself in the pit, puts himself in front of a tower, they do have True. the ability to kill them. Uh, like, he doesn't have a save on the side of IG Vitality, so Invoker has to play the way he's playing, at least until he is going straight for the BKB. Uh, I would have liked any defensive item, and I think BKB is absolutely fine for the fighting. And we talked about in the drafting stage that IG's lineup does literally nothing to heroes with BKBs. Yeah. So it definitely goes up in value there. I wonder if Beastmaster will get one of his own eventually, but it looks like he has the Necro Book as well as the Pipe queued up. Oop, tornado flies out, gonna try to push the creep wave top, but Tower does take a little bit of damage here. Looks like they they do want to bring it down with that edict. Should be able to. Tide does have the full pipe going for the Lotus Orb. Very strong item this game, the Lotus Orb. Now look at bottom. I mean this is what BM does, Beastmaster. Just pushes towers, forces you to react. And they're actually looking for a kill here. I think the one person you cannot kill here is the Razor, and you got to be careful. There are four heroes here. He does have the DD on the Razor if he manages to use it, but meanwhile, Invoker, just doing Invoker things, has the Boots of Travel available to show up to the fight. I really like that he cho cho chose to go back for those, just because he wants to play like this. 
and be able to show up to these fights. He can always beast, he can always uh, boots travel to the Beastmaster summons, so that will make him be able to join fights from pretty much anywhere. And you're just going to see his net worth accelerate. So you said Midas is like an outdated item. Why is it bad on like an invoker this game? Like why didn't he get it this game if he's just going to be farming? Um, because he was a part of a few early engagements, and it, it's just one of those things where the problem with Midas, in my opinion, overall, is it ex it accelerates your net worth, but doesn't actually make you any stronger. Yeah. So you're just more vulnerable to just feeding away a lead. And since kills are like based on how much net worth you have, I just it's just a weird item. I, I feel like you're leaving yourself vulnerable and. I think he could have actually gotten away with the Midas this game, I'll be honest with you. But at the same time, I, I think just pretty much no heroes feel comfortable going Midas very except rarely. Except Spearbreaker. Yeah, except for Spearbreaker. Yeah, was that whatever. FY? Was that uh, FY? Yeah, I think, or yeah, yeah, it was that series. Gotta yeah. attack fast, man. But I, he went for the Treads, which is basically like a less greedy version of the Midas. And I don't mind it. I think that in this patch, shying away from Midas most of the time, it's weird to put these type of items in the meta just because... They just don't fit the way that you play. And even though he hasn't participated all that much, he has been constantly applying pressure on lanes. And you do that better with these cheaper items like treads. Yeah. Well, smoke from IGV, but they're not really going to find anyone. Look at the Hawk. Uh-oh. Oh, they find him. Here we go. Sunstrike Mystic Flare. That is a, a lot of damage in a little pie circumference. My yeah, goodness. that neutral centaur threw in the casual stun. I don't know if you saw that. Just chilling. He's ready. Yeah. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> He's like, what's oh, going on here? Alright. Look at this. It just feels this Kunkka as well, right? We've seen some impactful Kunkkas, but he just doesn't have setup. Yeah, and they're just playing this cat and mouse again, and they're forcing IG to walk back. Leshrac will be spawning pretty quick because of the Bloodstone. And they're out. <laughs> yep, that's all they're doing. They're just like, come get here, and we're going to leave. We're going to disperse. We have the Boots of Travel on the Invoker, so we are mo mo Whoa. we are more mobile than you are. Do you, boots of Travel on, an, on a Leshrac in a losing game? Do you, instead of finishing the Shivas? I think he kind of has to. I don't like it either, well, honestly. Just because this, invo yeah, this Invoker problem. Like, they're just having map pressure issues with this Beastmaster Invoker. And the difference between Invoker and, and the Lesh here is that Invoker's, because of the BKB, unkillable to this pickoff. While the Lesh Rack can, as you just saw there, just get bursted full to zero. Damn. But I think they have to deal with these lanes. Otherwise, this cat and mouse game that IG Vitality is using is just going to keep keep happening. So th this allows the Lesh Rack to go bottom while the rest of his team is around the Roche Pit. And he will be able to boost the travel to the engagement, just like the Invoker plans to. Invoker dodges a smoke gank there. But now middle... Yeah, as you said, just four heroes of IGV running around. Invoker obviously can always boot to travel somewhere. But now he might look for a solo kill on this Leshrac. With the Yules could be tough. He might get a T. Oh! oh. What? He's going to BKB. Oh, in comes Dogfights. Another TP as well. Meteor comes down to deny happens. Beastmaster's here. IGV super putting down his ward, trying to chase Q. Oh, the Sun Strike plays himself. And look at that. I was, I was like, that BKB, <laughs> he might not have still needed it, but there's no reason he not to He just didn't want it. the Lush to yeah. Yules him and run away. Yep, no reason not to. And now, no more Cat and Mouse. If they have, do they have book, they have book three. I'm surprised he's not just popping it here. Yeah, and that's... I'm really he's not. Inevitably, when you drag the enemy team around like that, you're going to pick him off. And they've done the, they've picked off the Lush Rack enough to this point that his Bloodstone charges are so low that he doesn't respawn quick enough. I'm watching this. Look at Oh, they know where he's coming from. You always see where the rockets come from. Now, look at they slowly rotate. They're going to find him eventually. And July's looking, but he might get this hook angle. The Oh, oh the block. The tornado cock Man, block. The tornado. Yep, they're going to go in. This should be a kill now. Sunstrike won't get the kill because super will. And man, IGV, they, I don't even want to say they look like a different team. It's just a, a different kind of draft. And it, it's definitely worked out. Their play style is completely different. And it's working. I mean, last game, it just didn't look like they had a clear cut way to to execute in this game. Kills are simple. You roar, you, you Skywrath Mage ult, you Sunstrike, they die. Yep. And they have a hero that's the dis dis like the designated split pusher. They have a group of four that run around. And ease of execution is not something to be you know, tampered with. Like it, it, it is important in any lineup that you just have a straightforward way to play the game. Yeah. Dota is a hard enough game as it is, let's be honest. It and is. So... Like, you're just seeing it like these not any different players. They just look a lot better this game because their lineup has synergy. And I was a little bit concerned about this Razor Ooh. pick, but at the end of the day, it enabled their laning stage, and now you're seeing the way they're playing now. They're looking for pickoffs. They have the Beastmaster Roar as, er, coming up. 
This Sorry, it's not actually up yet. This is about to be seconds. a fight. It looks like Dyer is actually thinking about it, but then they got the, both teams kind of got scared. This right shrine there. is death zone for Radiant. I yeah. can't tell you how many teams I've watched take a fight on that and just feed. Just lose. <laughs> yep. But July, trying to farm up that level 18. That's level three ulti. I like the way they're distributing the map with IG Vitality because now top lane is kind of just a dead lane for, for IG. They don't want to go there. Like, There's nothing to get done on that side of the map now that Roche is gone. So now Vitality is just grouping up in the bottom lane. And it just feels awkward for, for Invictus Gaming to farm anywhere right now. And they're forced to just walk top because they have nothing else to do. It looks like they will be losing this tier two here shortly. And they'll probably just force them back uh, on the side of IG and then just... Uh, Probably just reset the map and look to go mid tier two after this. All right, come on, half. He missed both those siege creeps. But Razor goes S and Y. Thirty minute S and Y. Is he just Value. move speed moving around the map? I mean, yeah, they I, are I, just running around the map. It's I not don't think terrible. S and Y is an item that you buy when you don't need anything else. He has the BKB, has the Yules for survivability while he's pushing or uh, farming, and the S and Y just gives him a little bit of everything. Ooh, almost a full pipe on Beastmaster, Rocket. Will scout out the Invoker. Will he hook? No. Nope. Nope, so they force him back like like they need to, and now Invoker's going to push out top, and then they're going to regroup mid, possibly oh, get this roar. pickoff. That is going to be a pickoff. Sunstrike not even needed there. This is actually really good execution coming out from IG Vitality here. Closing off the map, forcing IG Vitality, or Invictus Gaming to just sit back is together. There? Should the Titan, like, should the Titan be playing more grip? Feels like he's just farming. He has four-step blink. Like, he could find these pickoffs, right? Yeah, it's... Is it too? Is it just like you blink, you use your ravage? Like if you don't win the fight, you you just lose the yeah, game. Yeah, I mean kind they have thing? to chain stun, and their chain stun's super awkward. Like it's not if if there's a split second that they're not stunned, they're just gonna pop their BKB, and suddenly that's over. Yeah. And like the the torrent follow up, the the Leshrac split earth follow up, none of it's instant, and so it's just a little weird. And with the Beastmaster roar, it's just so much simpler. They don't even have follow up stuns; they just kill you in the in the roar, and. A classic example of the opposite of last game where it's just harder for IG to play this game. And I, I wasn't too sure about IG Vitality's lineup, but... They it played it so well. Yeah, but the Razor, they, they used the landing stage to spur this ahead, and and Ooh, I like the, the itemization. He's trying to bait out the BKB, but he's just going to get the kill. Invoker doesn't have to do anything, just cast spells, get kills, and I don't know. Okay, what about this? Hurricane Pike Invoker. I feel like in this game, he doesn't need to play like that. I've never even, is Hurricane, Hurricane uh, Pike uh, Invoker popular? Uh, I, like I mean, it item. makes him pretty much unkillable, yeah. other than X. Like, he's not going to die unless he gets X'd. And he has BKB. So. Yeah, and so it makes it so he's, he doesn't have to pop BKB just because he gets gone right. on by clock or anything like that. And it, it's... At this point, I don't hate the item, just because I think he does enough damage as is. I don't think they have damage issues. Yep. And... Uh, it's an item that I don't think he needs anything else is how I kind of look at it. Gotcha. Makes his game easier to play, too. That's always nice. It is. Cataclysm is up now. Get a tornado. Get a just zone him out, it looks like. The Shiva's is complete, though, so it that is. will help D push. A lot harder. They're looking for kills, it looks like, but they're running back as a team. You got to be careful. In comes the Ravage. What a silence by Dogfights immediately. In July, going in. Baboka should be the first one dead. Not quite yet. Stun comes out. Now in July, going to be in a little bit of trouble. Aggressive gets ultied by Q. They're going to try to get in July, but he's still alive. Somehow forced that away. Cataclysm is going to explode on Aggressive. Might just die. He does after that ulti. Now Miracle on the back just blows up XXS. And, well, Ravage is down, and... The only core down is Beastmaster, so I think IGV is it's pretty damn happy. SRF doing his best Shiva impression there. Just complete whiff on the on the Ravage. When he went in though, that was that was quick fingers. Oh, by that the was dog that's fights. like dog yeah, that preemptively queued yeah, up, and I love did. the communication from that. Like, uh, and that's something that they had to have talked about briefly before it happened. He silenced, and the, all of IG Vitality, nobody hits him because if you hit him, yeah, it, it purges the, the silence. So you just ignore him. That was so and that, was, that was really well executed. That was, that was actually really nice to see. Uh, disarmed on the Invoker, but they're just going to suck the damage from Tide. Razor definitely makes Tide's game super awkward to play, and that's something I didn't really consider in the draft, and it's coming into play a lot. Yeah, obviously Link down now, so can play a little more aggressive, but they front line, they don't allow him to take a Tier 3, and they're just going to back. I'm really surprised they're back and not going to try to take it. I think they're in no rush here. Uh, 
I don't, what are they scared of as the game goes on? Kunko's not enough. He has no BKB. He dies to just invoker combo. If he gets tornado, he's dead. Period. And he needs. He doesn't have a. Do you think he should go BKB? I, on I, think, he, I think he has to. He's going blink now. Though. Yeah. I. I don't know. I'm. I'm not a fan of not. I'm not a fan of skipping BKB against Invoker. It seems like a lot of Kunkas have been just going BKB, and the one time they need it, we do is have a hook shot coming in. Super taking a ton of damage. So is Poboka. He gets ultied out, though. It's a one for zero. And now Boat comes in, hits Razor, buyback from Witch Doctor on the backside. In July, this guy's been out of position a few times. He goes down. That's a gem of True Sight on the ground. Now IG just chasing. Can they find anyone? We have a Yule's Ford. The net comes out, but BKB pop by Miracle. Can he steal damage? Not for six seconds, so he's not doing the most, but still, last Shrek about to take a ton of damage here. Blows up, and now SRF maledicted up. See you later, my friend. Bobica tries to zone him out. He might just zone his own life away, though. They're chasing him. X marks the spot. Pulls himself back. Meteor won't hit. They're still chasing. Oh, but the coconut comes. Bounces on two here. This might be a double kill. He gets the boat rum, so two more hits instead of one. They'll get the kill in the chase down. Oracle will get away. Yeah, Invoker just had his boots of travel on cooldown for the beginning of that fight, and then the minute he shows up, everyone just gets crowd controlled and dies. No nice. BKBs. Yeah. And you already mentioned, like, they've been buying a lot of BKBs in these games. But the one game they maybe should buy But the more. nice thing about this game is that Vitality's lineup can threaten you through BKB, which yeah. is really nice. I think it's a good balance this game. I think one of the, some of the most successful drafts, like, you need to buy BKBs to deal with it, but you also aren't just immune because you have one. That's and suddenly... Full hard on Razor now, by the way. Oh, gosh. He didn't even have a... He only static linked, like, 62 damage at the very beginning of that fight. If he would have had the static link for, like, that secondary fight, that could have been a lot worse. And I, now I, liked, I like his itemization here. I, like I, it. I feel like his job is to just be... Annoying. A, a, yep, a menace in these fights, exactly. And if he just forces them to focus him, he can reliably get his BKB or Yules off and delay the fight and then... Invoker is just going to do his thing. Long drawn out fights. Invoker with the AOE damage as well as control. The slows, OQ. the stuns. And Coconut's flying. Oh, the sun strike immediately goes down. And that was like a thousand range kill. Like yeah. nobody even showed up within. Doesn't matter. Nighttime, they probably didn't even see anyone here. Yeah. yeah. And no commitment required. Now. Still have Roar. Only utilize the Witch Doctor ultimate for that. Yep. And now the buyback. But obviously, we can watch Razor. He's just waiting. BKB plus Link on that, that tight hunter, even if he gets a Ravage off, he could be in a lot of trouble. And I think IG still has a chance in a game like this, but they they also kind of – I don't like these no-carry drafts. You know, as much as it seems like a pub complaint to have, they just have no late-game scaling. Like someone you're like, we win a team fight. Hey, guess what? We have a Terrorblade Luna. We can take yeah. your base. This one, hey, we won a team fight. I guess we can get a tower. Yeah, we got a Kunkka Daedalus. Yeah. You know? uh, it's, it's it's good damage, and all. But, but it's not a tower pusher yeah. objective taker. Yeah, and the Lushrag, nice and all in theory with the Diabolic Edict, but he's a hero that has to be able to stand point blank on that tower, and that's not what you can do against the lineup this that Vitality a, has. Aegis get the Roche. Invoker, yeah, and they're going to have a, an Octarine and about 400 gold on him as well. So he's not the quickest farming Invoker because he didn't go the Midas, but he's still the most farming in the game because... His team forced him to play that way. Yep. And here we go. Ravage comes out. BKB gets popped immediately by Invoker. XX has taken so much damage. Here comes the boat. It's going to mitigate a ton of damage. Mystic Flare doesn't really hit on anyone. Everyone's just running away. Up top, we have that Link coming out 192. Still no BKB used by Razor yet. This guy has not had to use his BKB. And now Ravage is down. This is when you know you're in trouble if you're IG. Like the Razor just ran past everyone and zoned everyone in the back. Yeah, he just pops the cheese and he doesn't care. Or did he even pop the cheese? Did he hand it off? Nope, he popped it, but yep. who cares? Nope. They have no Ravage. Yep. And now you're seeing, trying to take this melee Rax, obviously. He has Link up again, but he doesn't even need it. Just right clean down. Roar comes off. Here comes Cataclysm as well. A ton of damage. He does Link up. Steals 70. Right clicking. Boats flying in. Will hit the Invoker. Nope, goes past him. Lightning comes down. SRF gets silenced again. And what a hectic fight. Look at me. Miracle, he's ready to go. He's like, I still got a BKB, 70 damage. They kill dogfights on the back, but there goes Q, and I believe that's a dieback from him. On the backside, Bobica comes from out of nowhere, takes a ton of damage. He's just going to go down. Oh, my goodness, in July, almost dies as well. Gets out with 50 HP. Aegis 
is popped. He gets the BKB, double tornado, and uh-oh. The ulti coming out from the Razor. Meteor coming down, hits him on the head, and this is <laughs> looking to be some damage. I love the casual, like, death on the Beastmaster from the Dying Kong. He gets the crit on the creep and just kills him. But not looking good for IG. They still have, you know, full health on both cores. No BKBs, though, so they could possibly look to catch them out with the Yules into the Kunkka buyback, I think, might be happening here. Oh, but there, oh, he linked the Lesh instead of the Tide right yeah, that's there. That's quite odd. Could have definitely stolen a lot more there, but looks like they want to get away. They want to get more, but you still got to be careful because if you get chain stunned like he might, BKBs are coming up very shortly, though. 20 seconds on Invoker. Razor has his in five. They don't have any detection, so he always has Ghost Walk as a free get out of jail card, but they do have the, the clockwork respawning. He's teeping oh, into the shrine. Oh, no. And dog fights. Dog fights was waiting. He's like, I know this. This mother trucker is going to do something like that. He did it last fight, too. He TP'd behind him and ran in. You got to admire the balls on this you man, Baboka, I mean, though, you know? You got to make a change, right? Yeah. He's trying. I mean, the change isn't in the right direction, <laughs> but he's, he's doing it. Hey, man. What the hell? Radial deafening blast? That is that even a word? No, I'm just kidding. He has the... Oh, my... Wait, what? Why did they turn it to radial? Yeah, what, what it used to be. AO, I think it was called AOE. It was just AOE to everyone. Was radio, yeah. yeah. I think we all knew what that meant. We knew what it know? meant. It just you don't have to yeah. throw these words at us. Yeah. We're simple, simple We're Kay Conas, yeah, my yeah. friend. We, <laughs> we didn't make it past the third grade with our website. Yeah, you can have that in, like, the European English yeah. version, but in for us, we, we just want AOE. AOE. Yeah. Simple. So BKB finally coming out. I still can't believe, like, IG, remember last game, how early? They bought, like, second item BKBs on everyone. And in a game where it feels like they really need them, they're buying them third or fourth item. Yeah, it's just quite odd. I, I mean, at the same time, we did talk about, like, the, the combo from Beastmaster Sunstrike does pierce Very the good, BKB. So, yeah. yeah, and so it's not like it's just absolutely free for them, but, I mean, against Evoker, you just can't play without a BKB. It's no. so difficult. Whoa. Boba, oh, yeah, in a little trouble again, but he'll get out. They do have lads. Oh my goodness, here comes a Cataclysm. Last track will just go down. They can't save him. In comes the boat. They're going to do some damage. SRF just getting right clicked. Already used Ravage, and it didn't feel like anything. There's the radial, and now they're going to run in. He's going to ulti himself on the Oracle, but he's still going to die. Tornado goes through. They kill the Titan. This is looking to be G's, and there they are. So, wow. Is this our first one when we, I watched at least? Yeah, that was a good game. I mean, I didn't. Two good games, I thought. I'm glad to be wrong about a draft. That was nice. I, I felt like I didn't love you the razor pick. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be wrong. And that was well played by Vitality. And it's nice to see that their lineup had a clear purpose, clear idea of how to win the game, and they used it. I love the way they played around Roche. Incredibly patient, just kept forcing IG back when every time they came. On IG, they just left on Vitality. And meanwhile, Voker's just farming. He's the win condition of the team. He outscales everybody on the IG lineup and, and even, just bought time for yeah, him. Even without, like, you know, the mites. He was farming slower, but he was still in the lead. I mean, I just, like you said, you called it cat and mouse, right? Just four heroes run to one side, so IG follows them, and Voker goes to the other. Still yep. has Sunstrike to help out. And this Lushrak like, has to build boots of travel to deal with that. And then, like you said, he just... A behind Leshrac with like four Bloodstone Chargers building Boots of Travel. That's not exactly yeah, how you envision is. winning the game. And I don't know. I feel like Oracle is a hero that is nice in theory against these type of lineups, but I don't feel like he was ever in position to save the Leshrac there. Like Didn't he just got. Even with the Aether Lens, yeah. Yeah, and you just have to be so scared on Oracle because what if the Beastmaster just blinks on you? And I don't know. I just I, I like the itemization from all of Vitality. I thought it was, it was refreshing to see the change up. Yeah, like yeah. He, he got book two, and he could have got book three, but he's like, wait, I'll just save another thousand, get that blink, and like you said, it makes yep. Oracle worthless. So, yeah, our, our first truly 1-1, one, one, at least I cast. I don't know if there was others in the group. TNC, obviously, I, I think they had one. But, man, IG, IG Vitality, it still looks like IG, you know, it still feels a little bit over, but IGV, they show they can definitely take games there at least go. off regional opponents, which is good. I, you know, we're excited for the five more series we've got today. Yep, we actually have ten. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this was the last game of the day. Please. Thank you for tuning in, whether you're American, European, Chinese. I don't know why you're watching us, but yeah, I have no we appreciate either. it. It was great. Brian, any last words for people? Keep it PMA. Keep it PMA. That is so true. Even in a game like this. 
You have Super. He dies so many times in the first game. Even Witch Doctor, only six deaths. He kept it positive. Came back strong. They won the game. He went positive. 6-6-16 six, six, is definitely positive. That, you that always is, round up. Yes, exactly. He basically had 10 kills, five deaths. The guy's a monster. You round up, round down. Yep. And that's what we're saying. 2.0 okay to D. So tomorrow, come back. We are going to have more best of twos. Group stages will go on. I believe same time. I don't know what. I believe it's like 9 Eastern. I'm an Eastern kind of guy. Yeah. So we'll do with that. China schedule, exciting stuff. It and is. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. We do. So in five seconds, we're going to be leaving you. So everyone, just put your heads down and, and thank everyone for the Dota we had yes. today. See ya. Laters.